What makes Phoenix Wright unique? Ever since October 12, 2005, the phrase OBJECTION will forever be immortalized with the Ace Attorney franchise. After five main series titles, two titles in a spin-off series, and a number of ports to varying systems, Phoenix Wright has become a staple of Capcom's intellectual properties. He was even featured in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Too bad he isn't that good. Oh, but there is a sequel on the way. The series is beloved by fans thanks to the quirky characters and the over-the-top courtroom scenes that are matched with some of the most iconic music in video games. It's been said before that the presentation brings excitement to the boring world of the courtroom, but there are a lot more subtleties in the series that make it the long-standing franchise that it's become. What makes Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney unique is how it disassociates the player from the game, making it a real experience and less of a video game. Let's begin. Visual novels have always been a niche market. There are way too many to count simply because they are cheap and easy to develop. 95% of them are romance novels where you play as some awkward teenager looking for the affection of one of many archetypes. But that's where Phoenix Wright becomes something new. Not only is it not a romance, but you don't really play as Phoenix. Sure, you get to pick the evidence and you have to look around for clues, but you're really just fulfilling the flowchart that progresses the story. It's fun to uncover clues and ponder who could be behind it all. The issue is, you're confined to the constraints of the game. You're just reading a lot of text. This is what I mean by disassociating the player from the game. It doesn't try to talk to you directly. Sure, there are those early tutorial moments, but it does its best to not be too cheesy. When you get this disconnect, it does something to a player. As you read through the text, constantly trying to find false statements and other issues with the evidence descriptions, you immerse yourself into everything that's happening. It's not you acting as Phoenix, you're just playing the game and trying to defend the client. Because you read so deeply into everything and pay so close attention to everything that's being said, you gain an attachment to the characters. Match this with beautifully timed music and sound cues, and the game has a charm that really brings out the well-written story. There are even small clues dropped outside of areas where you can call an objection, which provokes your thoughts in a completely different way. You can't act on them now since the game won't let you. Suddenly you're trying to progress the story just to figure out if you were right, because you've been thinking about it since you noticed it. It builds the excitement of the game because you, the player, are actively thinking about everything that's happening. Beyond that, the game itself becomes its own experience because it holds you back from progressing too quickly. It helps develop much more compelling characters thanks to these little hints that you pick up on, yet the other characters don't. There's the game, its characters, and its beautifully crafted stories, and then there is the player who is not involved directly. From our perspective, just trying to figure everything out gives us a natural want to progress the game. Maybe we were right, maybe we were wrong, but in the end, there's this odd sense of accomplishment. The moment that Pursuit theme hits is an exciting rush of adrenaline since we know full well what's going on. That is what makes Phoenix Wright unique. Be sure to like the video if you've enjoyed it, and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos that discuss what makes any video game stand out. Next week I think we'll talk about another more... psychological visual novel. Thanks for watching.